Hi everybody! Today's video is my review on some pretty impressive flameless heater bags from a company called MealSpec. These bags really do an excellent job of heating MREs, but these MealSpec bags are more powerful than the standard MRE heaters, and I definitely think it's worth having some of these around, especially if you're into hunting, camping, or fishing, or if you have a bug out bag or an emergency vehicle kit. They are extremely lightweight and very portable. This is five of them folded together. So as you can see, you can keep several of them folded up in your bag or backpack without taking up very much space. And they'll give you a hot meal in about 12 minutes. All you need to do is add about half a cup of water and your food. Um, if you've ever had an MRE, you're probably already familiar with the standard MRE heaters that many of them come with. And these are really similar, but they're a lot better. These bags do get hotter and they stay hotter for longer and they also have the longest shelf life. They're also the only MRE heater bag where the water you add actually boils and the temperature gets hot enough to cook raw fish or hard boil an egg, which is why I said they're pretty impressive. The military and the Red Cross and several other organizations have already been using these exact bags, but they only became available to civilians a few months ago, so if you haven't heard of meal spec bags yet, that is why. Um, these bags are non-toxic, but I'm going to carry some folded heavy-duty aluminum foil with mine to seal my food in, just because I'm hesitant to have any of my food sit in the water with this heating element. To use this bag, first you have to rip it open. And inside, you'll find a heating element that is sealed in foil. So you have to open that up. And this is what your heating element looks like. You just drop that into your bag and put in your meal along with about half a cup of water, which takes you to the fill line. And then you quickly seal up the bag and leave it to do its thing for about 12 minutes. When the water hits the heating element, a reaction starts, and a lot of energy comes from that initial reaction, which lasts about 15 seconds. So you do need something inside the bag to absorb the energy, whether it be food or something like rocks to use as a heat source. But if the bag is empty except for the water and the heater, then it will pop open. And again, I was told that these bags and the heaters are non-toxic, but that's still not enough for me to want my food to touch the heating element or the water that the reaction happens in. So that does limit what I'll personally be using these bags for. Although you can obviously cook or heat whatever you want. For prepackaged foods, I'm only going to put canned goods or MREs in here. And for other foods, I'm either going to seal them in heavy duty aluminum foil or I'm going to use glass canning jars if I want to heat something that's more of a liquid. I'm not personally going to use the black bags to hold my food in here since the internal temperature gets so hot and I just don't want any plastic leaching into my food. So, to demonstrate how these bags work, I'm going to start out by heating a can of soup for you guys, and I'm also going to time it on my phone. Okay, I've got my can of soup in there with the heating element, and I'm going to add about four ounces of water and seal it up as fast as I can. It's sealed up nice and tight. <laughs> wow, my dogs really don't like this. <gasps> They say that in the first 20 seconds, the bag has actually reached 218 degrees and it should go for about 10 to 12 minutes, during which time the bag stays above 200 degrees and creates steam for about 12 minutes. Here it's been about 5 minutes and according to meal specs testing, the bag's contents will stay above 180 degrees for about 15 minutes, so that's awesome. So far it's been about 9 minutes and I can still hear it sizzling so it's still at work. It's been 12 minutes now 
and I don't really hear anything else going on, so I'm gonna take it out and see how hot it is. Definitely feels hot on the outside. Well, I'm getting about 130 degrees on the soup, so now I'm just gonna try some. I'm happy to report that this can of soup is the perfect temperature. It's not too hot, it is not too cold, it's not lukewarm, it's just right. So these bags work great for cans of soup, and I'd say you could also use them to heat canned vegetables or canned meals like ravioli, manwich, chili, anything like that, and it'll come out just fine. I'd say most people have some canned goods at home, so if you have an electric stove, these bags would come in really handy to heat food if you have a power outage. I had a power outage for almost a week about a couple months ago, but I have a gas stove and also a fireplace, so I did not need to use these bags. But I do know from experience that when it comes to food, once I've been without power for about a day, I'm most concerned with using up the food that's in my refrigerator before it goes bad. And in my fridge, the two main things I've got are <laughs> what's right here, eggs and vegetables. So I'm going to attempt to cook some eggs, broccoli, and green beans in these bags. I really love hard boiled eggs and I already know that this bag can hard boil one egg just sitting in the water, but I'm going to make the most of a bag and see if I can cook three eggs at once since that's how many fit across the bottom. And I've also wrapped all my eggs in foil like this just because eggshells are so porous. Plus maybe wrapping them in foil will help them cook better. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, here we go. I also want to mention it really helps to have the water pre-measured so that you can just pour it in and then shut the bag as fast as possible because the steam that shoots out from the top of the bag and also from the steam holes is extremely hot so you need to get your hands out of the way of the top of the bag as fast as possible and make sure that it's completely closed when the initial reaction starts. You should also be extremely careful when you handle the bag and open it just because I'm not kidding, it gets super hot and it would be really easy to burn yourself. So definitely keep your hands and your face away from the top for sure and just be really careful. I do like my eggs to be more hard boiled than soft boiled so even though the bag says meals are ready after 12 minutes, I did leave my eggs in here for 20 minutes. Here are my results. I will say that two out of three look like they're cooked perfectly, and the third looks more soft boiled. Next time for three eggs, I'd probably do 23 to 25 minutes, but I will say the bags worked really well, and I'm happy with how they turned out. For my vegetable test in a meal spec bag, I have cut up some raw green beans and broccoli, and I've added three tablespoons of water to it. So I'm gonna seal it up really tight in this piece of foil and see what happens. I left the broccoli and beans in for 15 minutes. Everything's nice and hot, but I'd say the broccoli is more edible than the green beans since it's cooked pretty much all the way through. Most of the green beans are still pretty tough yet. I'm really curious if these bags will cook potatoes. So here I've got some baby reds and I pulled out four of them and cut them into quarters and I'm gonna wrap them up tight in foil and see how they cook. Here we go, hope it works. Well, here they are after 20 minutes, and I did just eat one, and it was soft enough to chew, so that's good. I would say that most of them cooked pretty well. Some of them did not. Some of them are pretty raw and hard in the middle still. All the things I've shown so far, canned goods, eggs, 
vegetables. You're probably not likely to have that stuff with you if you are stranded in your vehicle or bugging out or hiking or something like that. You're much more likely to have an MRE or something, but um, if you are hunting or camping, you are probably very likely to catch a fish. So now I'm gonna try cooking a raw salmon filet in a meal spec bag. So here's the salmon that I'm gonna cook. I just put a little bit of salt, pepper, dill, olive oil, and lemon juice on it. And I'm gonna put another piece of foil over the top and roll off our edges to make sure that it's sealed really well. I've already got my heater in the bag and here's my wrapped salmon. And again, I'm just gonna add about a half a cup of water and seal it fast. Well, it did cook. I'm getting 110 degrees. I do personally like my fish a little bit more cooked than this and a little more flaky, so I'm gonna rewrap it in another piece of foil and give it a little more time in another meal spec bag and see what happens. It definitely got hotter this time and it looks nice and flaky, so I'd say it's good. Next, I'm gonna try to heat some coffee and some hot cocoa, each in a separate meal spec bag. In this quart jar, I've got three cups of water and three packets of instant coffee. And in this pint jar, I've got one and a half cups of water and three tablespoons of cocoa mix. This is how the quart jar fits. Here's how the pint jar fits. I left the coffee in for 15 minutes and the jar is hot but it's not too hot to touch. I'm getting about 125 degrees on the coffee. This coffee is an absolute perfect drinking temperature. It is nice and hot, but it's definitely not too hot, and it's also not lukewarm at all. It's just right. So I say these bags work perfectly for using with canning jars to heat any liquid that you want. Here's the hot cocoa. It was in for 17 minutes, just because I was messing with the coffee. The jar definitely feels hotter on this one. And obviously this one's gonna be hot because the bigger jar of coffee was hot. This one's a little above 140 degrees. It makes sense that it'd be hotter since it's a smaller container and I left it in longer, so it's definitely great to know that you can keep liquids in jars in these bags. Super useful. This one's also drinkable. It is borderline too hot, but that's definitely better than too cold, so it worked great. The last thing I'm gonna do with one of these bags is to see how well it works when it's completely frozen. This bag has been stored in my freezer, and now I'm gonna take it outside where it's exactly zero degrees right now, and I'm gonna see if I can use this bag to heat this pile of rocks. And the reason that I wanna try this is so I know if I can keep these in my vehicle in the winter time, because if I ever have one of these with me and wanna heat up some rocks to keep in my pockets or my sleeping bag or something, then it's very possible that these bags would be cold. All right, here we go.
That's awesome. I guess I'll leave it out here about 15 minutes. All right, it's been about 12 minutes and it's not steaming anymore or sizzling, so I'd say it's done. Here's my pile of rocks after 15 minutes out in the cold. And I'm thrilled that the bags worked because I definitely feel confident now I can keep them in my vehicle to use for food in the winter time or to heat rocks for an emergency heat source. And I would say they're not super hot. They're just a little bit warm. I doubt they'll stay warm for very long, but they still feel really nice after coming in from outside. All right, I'm not gonna test any more bags, but I do think they're pretty amazing. And they can be found for about $1.50 each at mealspec.com. And depending on what you wanna use them for, it might take a little bit of trial and error on the cook times, but I do think they're definitely worth having. And I'm really impressed with how they heat liquids and soups and also cook fish and eggs. So I do think they're great to keep on hand for emergencies, especially in a bug out bag, a vehicle kit, or in with your camping and hunting gear. Um, I have had a few bags pop open on me during that initial reaction, so even if you have food in the bag, you should always be cautious and know that they could pop open. And when I did have them pop open, I think it was because my foil packages were too big, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Either way, usually they don't pop open, and I've never had that happen with glass jars yet, so... I do hope you guys found this informative, and I will be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.